What's up guys, Bloodshed here. Today we're gonna to talk about Lilith in Diablo 4. A lot of people have been asking me who is she and why is she there? Where's Diablo, man? I personally love that they went with Lilith as the choice. I, if you don't know, have a like a Lilith inspired basically tattoo on my forearm. She's awesome, man, and she's gonna add a nice complex character to D4, but let's start from the beginning, okay? So Lilith is the daughter of Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred. You can see how the horns are inspired from her father. You know, she gets a little bit of that from him. Mephisto has like the dopest looking horns. So yeah, it's like the Ram style thing. She's also, she has her own accomplishments, okay? Not just being the daughter of Mephisto. She's the queen of all succubi, which are basically like the vile temptress, the hell witches that seduce seduce uh, people back to hell and things like that. So they're in a lot of mythology and they're pretty much all over in, in almost every like high fantasy game. Um, so she's the queen of all of that. I know some of you are thinking it's Angelina Jolie, but you would be wrong. She's much cooler than <laughs> Jolie, all right? To understand Lilith and how it all started, we have to first go all the way back to the eternal conflict, okay? The eternal conflict is sound is what it is right it's an eternal conflict it's a war that never ended between heaven and hell they would just battle each other for ages and sometimes hell would get you know ground and sometimes heaven would get ground but it just never ended it was like a balance of power it dragged on and on and on and on and lilith you know was on the side of you know hell and she would watch diablo her father and she was just never impressed. Val, she was never impressed with how they handled things. And she thought, she was thinking of ways how to end this eternal conflict and stop the fighting. She just wanted to go on vacation. She probably has been fighting since eternity. So that's what she was all about. But she kind of thought they were like bad leaders in general because they're, you know, they never really, nobody ever won. It just went on forever. One day after one of the many battles, um, Lilith took in a prisoner angel. That angel was called Anarius. He's part of the Angiris Council. At the time, there's five angels that ran all heaven. So he's a big deal. He was like one of the main five angels that ran stuff. The Knights of the Round Table. I guess that would be the, the Knights of the Halo Table. So, I don't know. Anyway, as he was waking up, he expressed his dissatisfaction with the Eternal War. He also was upset, man. He had to fight forever and, you know, they never won and all this stuff. He wanted to end the war as well. So it was like a match, a match made in heaven, right? A Romeo and Juliet tale where someone from one side and someone from the other side wanted to end the fighting and the suffering. It did specifically state in the lore that Lilith thought she could use him to her advantage because she is a temptress, so she could have tempted him. He instantly was infatuated with her, right? Um, you know, like she's like, oh, she was thinking of her own motives from the beginning. But even though ending the war is a good thing, it was also kind of like manipulating somebody to get what she wants. Together, they concocted a plan to steal the World Stone. The World Stone was the power of creation. It was colossal, a mountain-sized object of immense power. It's so powerful. You know, the Soul Stones, like in Diablo 1, or pretty much all Diablo, right? The Soul Stones where you trap Diablo in and other primevals. Just a shard of that, is called a soul stone, right? Just a little piece you can actually trap a primeval into. So you can imagine a whole mountain-sized version of it. You can you can make moves, baby. So they were successful. They stole the world stone. They created sanctuary. If you just think about the word sanctuary, it means a place of refuge or safety, which is basically what they made to get away from the eternal war, right? So it wasn't just them that defected, defected, not defected. It wasn't just them that defected from heaven and hell. There was a bunch of, they had like a following, right? There was a lot of people that were dissatisfied. So they took a lot of angels and demons and they went to sanctuary and they had a good party, man. They had, they made paradise and they started a party. They had kids and the first child was Rothma. So a lot of people think Rothma's in the D4 trailer, but it's unconfirmed as of right now. We'll get into that maybe in a future video. But as of right now, they had kids. They were in Sanctuary partying it up. These kids actually had the power of angel and demons. Like they had higher potential because they were just, they were the best of both worlds, so to speak. And um, they caused the threat. They posed the threat because they were so strong. And everybody's like, wait a minute, there's a balance of power here. We might have actually altered the balance of power forever. So when you're the toughest guy on the block, I guess even if it's your own kids, um, the, they basically sought to destroy all Nephilim and Lilith wasn't having it, man. Lilith is the mother, dude. So she went mad with power. She went crazy. Well, not with power. She went mad with rage because thinking her kids are going to get 
just eliminated, just executed. So what she did, she hunted down and murdered all Inarius' followers. Anyone who could do her children harm was eviscerated. So she's showing just pure brutality, like preemptive, like, you know, just brutal. But she did it for her own end because she wanted to use the Nephilim to end the war. But she also did save us. So it's a double-edged sword. It's more complex to her character. And maybe she really did care for us because she did look seemingly was happy and in love and didn't freak out until, you know, Inarius and everybody wanted to kill her kids. But was she just buying time till the army got really strong to then take over heaven and hell? And then once the war was over, what would she do? Like, we don't really know her true motive and that's what makes her menacing. When it came to Inarius, he had the power of the world stone. He actually banished her to the void. The void is an area I believe in hell with, it's just pitch dark, black, you can't escape. I mean, well, she did escape, but you can't escape, right? It's hard, to, it's hard to escape. So she did escape during the Sin War when the Nephilim needed her the most, kind of, like we needed to get our power back. So she did escape and then restore our power, manipulated the world stone, you know, changed a few wires around and helped us yet again. But, you know, so she saved us two times now, but is it because one day we'll help her with her agenda or will it be because something else, right? Because, you know, she just loves us because we're her children. Inarius was using the world stone to repress our powers, so she unrepressed it. So what did Inarius do? He banished her again for the second time to the void. This time he made it harder for her to escape because you can't really kill the evil. They just respawn in hell, right? It's a never ending war with hell. Like you just kill a demon, and they are technically dead, but they respawn in hell every single time. So Lilith, I believe, can't be killed either. So she would just respawn in hell and then only to return. So you have to like banish her or trap Diablo in a soul stone also, right? And then we have the Diablo 4 trailer that just launched. And we know that she's brought back, looks like a third time by this unknown figure, which again, a lot of people are saying it's Rothma. I'm not sure she didn't have the best relationship with Rothma. It could just be a random priest or it can be something else. Um, Lilith did have the power to shapeshift, so I don't know if maybe somebody else also has the power to shapeshift or whatever. I think her shapeshifting, and then we know that she shapeshifted, will be some cool scenes in Diablo 4, like some lore, some story, because it's like sinister, because she's shifting and manipulating maybe Nephilim, and we, and we know that as viewers, but maybe our characters don't know, and that would be some cool moments. Lilith apparently has heterochromia, I'd probably butchered that in Diablo 4, where her eyes are mis mismatched colors, gray and blue. In medieval Christian mythology, it's a characteristic for Satan himself. So they gave her a specific characteristic of pure evil, and it was considered to be the signs of a witch. Man, it is temptress, man. Her character is super cool, super complex. She has protected us many times, but she does show signs of savagery, brutality, deception, doing whatever she wants for her own agenda. I love these multi-character, multi-dimensional characters like this, man. I hope you guys are excited for D4 one day. A lot of people are asking me, why is she holding Diablo's helmet? Was well, seemingly holding his skull, not helmet, right? It's his skull. Um, I'm not sure, man. I don't know if she's gonna try to resurrect him or work with him, you know? One thing to note in Diablo 2, I remember if you kill Uber Lilith, she does drop the horn of Diablo. So, or do they just using it because it's like, hey, this is a Diablo game, remember? So this is Diablo. Or like, yeah, I don't know. Like, there's gotta be something. That's the fun stuff to come. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you think is gonna happen with the story or with Rothma, like is that Rothma? Who's that priest, man? We gotta find out. As soon as I find out and I get concrete evidence or whatever, we'll make a video of that too. Make sure to follow me at twitch.tv slash bloodshed. I'm gonna be streaming there today. I gotta, I gotta get ready to stream then. I gotta, we gotta go, we gotta make moves. Yo, that's all for me today. This is the Bloodshed and I'm out of here. Peace.